So one of the most important things in uh, when looking after a network um, or managing a network, I think, is ensuring your network is compliant. And basically all that means is that your network is healthy. What I like to do is make sure, I call it compliance because I make sure it's compliant to a set of um, set of success criteria. Now, to do that, you need to have some tests running on the network anyway. So what are you, what, what do you define as being compliant? For me, there'll be a, a, basically a framework built around it. And one of the first things is actually ensuring that you've got some checks running across your network, which most people have. Um, however, are you comparing those checks to a known good baseline? That's one of the most important things. So that's the checks that you would run. For example, pull errors and drops, environmentals, root peer state checks. Now, those are fairly standard ones, but you can go to even granular. That's where it re this really this compliance framework really becomes even more um, valuable to every team. Path topology checks, ensuring you've got a path from A to B and you can keep comparing that path, for example, to between critical services. Neighbor state checks, route table. Now checking a route table, generally, depending on how big your network is, sometimes it doesn't change that much. Having a route table check is gonna be useful to you. Optical power, checking your fiber optics um, power levels on your, on your SFPs. Do you do that? Can you go back and actually have a look if, um, if that's changed? So in sh once you've got these checks running and you've got certain benchmark or thresholds they're comparing to, that's your first layer of compliance. Now you've got uh, tools that can help you do this. Um, NetBrain, Itential, uh, SolarWinds, Grafana, Nessus, Acidian. There's all, a whole set of tools. Now they all, don't, don't all do anything, but they'll all complement each other. Once you've got your tool sets, you can actually build a matrix and actually see which ones are giving you what level of compliance. So that's one thing you can do. The other thing is the standards model. Having a set of standards of your configs and your security pieces in your configs and actually making sure that you're checking if your devices are compliant. So when you introduce a new switch, a new router, are you checking the interfaces or the config, specific configs? Does it have SNMP, communities encrypted? That kind of thing, it's always checking that your devices are compliant. Again, you can go to a dashboard and once these are all set, you can actually see a health um, rating for your environment. I think that's really important. Now, this is great and you can do all this on a, on a traditional network. And what I realized is that orchestrated platforms, uh, or platforms that come with orchestrations, like some of the fabrics we use, ACI, um, Cloud Vision, um, DNA. At first, I was a bit skeptical about, you know, what these actually introduce for us because they're limiting us. However, one of the things I've noticed while implementing, you know, SDA infrastructures or, or even ACI or, or Cloud Vision is these actually out of the box provide you these templates. It's very hard to deploy through an orchestrated platform. Obviously, you can use templates, but they come out of the box, giving you the ability to set a, a, a provision or they have a, provision, a provisioning model that actually deploys standard templates. So when you look at ACI, for example, and when you've deployed ACI, most of the switch infrastructure that you deploy and most of the config is very standard. So also when you're considering and, and having a look at, at some of these, having an orchestrated platform is one way of staying compliant. And these have got them built in. However, you can do it yourself as well. There's, there's, there's no different. It just means that some of the benefits of using orchestrated platforms is they give you that compliance. That's one of the good things I like about them. The other thing is making sure your operatives are aware, or operations teams, I should say, are aware of how to use all of this and, and what this all means. For example, if you've got an IPSLA probe check, what does it mean and what is it referring to? Really important. So for me, I think these checks should be done morning and evening. And sometimes I know I like to have them automated, but if they're always automated and operations team are just getting alerts, do they actually know when they get that alert how to go and maybe manipulate the alert um, to reflect something, maybe a, a different threshold? So it's important they've got the ability to log on and look and use these tools that are get, doing these checks rather than just looking for alerts. So just in brief, I think um, 
It's important for me for managing a network is compliance. It's basically a health check. Build a framework with state checks, some template checks. Um, you can do these all um, through, you know, open source tools or even some some tools in your um, current estate. Or just just know that some of the orchestrated platforms have this out of the box as well. If you've got any questions about some of this or you're interested in it, just give me a give me a shout or direct message me. Thanks.